Hello, welcome to the lecture series on vehicle dynamics. So let us continue our discussion on metrics of ground vehicle. In the previous video, I said the main metrics of vehicle dynamics are one is performance, second one is handling, third one is ride. Let us discuss each one of them in detail. So, what is performance? I think it is the, I explained earlier, it is the ability of the vehicle to accelerate from say 0 to 60 miles per hour or you can say 0 to 100 kilometers per hour kilometers per hour so you know acceleration is final velocity minus initial velocity by time 100 kilometers per hour if i multiply with 0.267 it is 26. Point 7 meters per second 0 that is a, what is the time that is acceleration so if I am talking about velocity versus time graph let us say what is the time taken for vehicle to accelerate like this right this region i am talking about so i can simulate this if you want i can simulate this okay. no difficult This way. This is using Adams. I can give all the properties. I can choose the road conditions. I can choose the vehicle. I can study its acceleration performance. Right? You can also simulate like this. Okay. Right. Now, these vehicles, while accelerating, one of the most important thing is this is the road say this is your vehicle so what is important over here is mu the friction between the tire and the road mu is very important Suppose I start accelerating the vehicle and the mu of the road, mu between this wheel and the road is low, then vehicle will start spinning. So let me demonstrate that. You can see here, I am accelerating the vehicle up till one point set right all of a sudden you see here the mu value is low this is how the vehicle will be spinning so mu plays a very very important role in acceleration performance okay right and equally important is deacceleration of the vehicle 
So only thing is it is opposite to acceleration. For accelerating, I apply attraction force, right? Both both the wheels, right? Or maybe based on whether it's rear wheel drive or front wheel drive. This is what you can call it as. So we apply some traction force. You want to stop the vehicle, we apply the brake force in the opposite direction. Correct now? So then the vehicle will deaccelerate. Basically, your vehicle is already running with certain velocity. Then it will slow down and come and stop at the point. Okay? Velocity versus time. This is your deacceleration. Okay, fine. Here also, mu is very important. By chance, while running this vehicle, the driver might see an obstacle. Yeah. To avoid this obstacle, he will apply hard brake. So you can call it as panic brake. So in order to stop in the shortest distance possible. In such a situation, these wheels, they stop rolling or spinning, they lock. And the vehicle simply skids. Okay. So that is what really happens. Okay. Let me do this. Demonstrate this. All clear on the road ahead. Everything looks fine. But suddenly a tailback in the bed. The driver breaks hard and tries to steer clear. So you can see here, this is what is really skidding is. And driver loses control over his steering. Okay. So that is acceleration. But you cannot accelerate a vehicle in an unlimited fashion. There is deacceleration. But also you should know that you cannot deaccelerate a vehicle to whatever value you want. Vehicle should be able to develop drop or pull. Then should be able to pull the, overcome the resistance, rolling resistance, the standstill condition. And vehicle should also be able to overcome insufficient friction conditions, something what you call it as wheel slipping. Also, you should be able to negotiate hills of reasonable gradient. Okay. So, in short, vehicle performance is all about its acceleration performance, its deacceleration performance, drawball pulling ability, and overcoming obstacles. Let us look at now Now here I would like to set the limit for acceleration You can see the Simple schematic diagram of the vehicle Let us say it is a front engine a Rear wheel drive vehicle This is your traction force let us say Right Total weight of the vehicle, load in the front, load on the rear. Okay, these are the reactions, right, at the front and rear and center of gravity is here, height of center of gravity. What is the traction force? What is the load coming on the axle? So, mu W. So you know very well, if there is some weight sliding, let us say, the normal weight is, let us say, W, and the force that you apply for traction is, say, F, and the friction here is, say, mu, 
then we say f is equal to mu w. W is also nothing but mg. And force is equal to mass into acceleration. So from these two equation, you can see that maximum acceleration possible is mu g. So also maximum deacceleration. <laughs> Suppose if mu value is something like 0.7. So, maximum acceleration possible is equal to 7 meter per second square. So, also maximum deacceleration possible is also 7 meter per second square. Now, if you try to accelerate more than that, the vehicle will simply skitter. Right? Let us say, let me mark this. This is lateral acceleration. This is linear acceleration. So maximum acceleration possible is mu g. Beyond that, if you accelerate, vehicle spins. It will be spinning. Maximum deaccelerate deacceleration possible is mu mu g. Beyond that, you try to, you know. Increase the deacceleration rate, wheels lock up, then the vehicle will be skiddy. Please, there is a difference between spinning and skiddy. Spinning is simply, if you see, this is the road, your front view of the vehicle. And no, this is your z-axis. This is your y-axis. Your vehicle will spin around z axis that is spinning skidding is simply sliding that's the kind of a thing right that's what happens so thus there is a limit for this you want to increase acceleration performance or deacceleration performance increase the mu value of course if you, you it is it is not necessary the mu value is always less than mu value can be greater than 1. It can be up to 2. It all depends upon the kind of road and the tire material that you have. Okay. So, then we can improve. Otherwise, difficult. So, you can see some of the cars that we use. I have given the names of the cars on their acceleration performance, time taken to reach from 0 to 60 miles per hour. And what are their acceleration values? Even if you look at high performance cars, you don't find in one second any vehicle accelerating. Right? Correct now? You see these values. So this is what I said, mu value can be up to 2. It all depends upon what road material and tire material you have. And I told you the concept. Bugatti Veyron, you see here, one of the fastest car. Okay. Right. Right, sir. This, uh, what is the time taken? 2.46 seconds. What is this power? 1001 PS. 16 cylinders. Average top speed of 408.47 kilometers per hour. That is the maximum speed it can reach. <coughs> okay. Similarly, if you take SSC Ultimate TT, fastest production car with an average top speed of 255.83 miles per hour. Its power is 1183 HP. What I am trying to say, all this won't matter. You want to achieve this acceleration. The road, mu, and the tire material, this is very important. Very important. Okay. So there are vehicle they design normally 
you can design for 45 degree hill climbing water wading tilt driving all these things so how you design is very important okay great another very important thing that we talk about is handling basically it is to do with maneuvering maneuvering so really you see here when you are having a vehicle like this and let us say you are taking a turn right taking a turn like this then you are going to give the steering input normally theoretical steering angle is 57.3 L by R L is nothing but wheel base length and R is the turning radius okay sometimes the vehicle vehicle might stop following this path it may follow this path this we call it as under steering that means not only this much plus some extra angle you have to steer right that is one possibility another possibility is that your vehicle might turn like this you are giving this is the theoretical less than that this you call it as over steering this is under steering so now why it happens i think i already explained this anyway i'll just say this for understanding say let us say this the front load is concentrated here a rear load is concentrated here when you are taking a turn there is a centrifugal force load on the front okay right and vehicle speed radius this is load on the rear v squared by r if this is high air than this let us say this is the overall center of gravity this force about this point creates a couple like this this force about this point creates a couple like this if this couple is greater than this couple what it does it tries to follow this then we call it as understated vehicle if this couple is greater than the other couple then it tries to rotate in follow this that we call it as over steer under steer means we call it as a sluggish vehicle this is responsive vehicle we call it if it is too much sluggish then when we are taking a at high velocity when we are taking a sharp turn probably it will go tangentially like this dangerous here without really giving input to the this thing it may turn on its own like this this you can see here from these demonstrations This time, with speed and operation at the same speed, the same 
Possibility is that another possibility. Okay, this is the vehicle. You are taking a turn like this. So you have wheels here, wheels here. When you are taking a turn, the centrifugal force will be acting like this. These are the grip forces which will be acting in this direction. If this force is greater than this force, the vehicle may simply slide and go. That is another possibility. Okay. So, handling is concerned with the response of the vehicle to driver's command and its ability to stabilize its motion against external distance, the disturbances, ease of maneuverability and stability. They should not over understeer, over oversteer. It's very important, right? Nor it should slide. Okay, now you see here. Whenever the vehicle is taking, you know, a turn, as I said, you will get the centrifugal force. So, mv squared by r. Here, I call it as av. This is what you can call it as lateral acceleration. Okay, so this is the centrifugal force to oppose, resist this, this lateral force will exist. Again, load of the coming on the wheel, load coming on the wheel as well as mu is very important, lateral mu is important. So just see here, when do we come across all this kind of situation? If you watch this video, you will come to know. You see here, only vertical was, ah, then immediately there will be lateral forces coming into picture. It's a very important thing. Okay, all right, sir. So now, you can see here very clearly, If you go beyond mu g, so it is g, g, vehicle will start spinning. Along this direction, you go beyond mu g, it will be skidding. Here also, mu lateral g is what you can say, lateral acceleration you can have. What is the meaning of that? When you are taking a turn, so acceleration is mu LG, then you can say what is V squared by R. So R is known to you. This lateral acceleration is known to you based on this. Then you can find out what is the maximum velocity with which you can take a turn. If you try to take a turn much higher than this velocity, then the vehicle will slide. Okay, so that will result into further problems like rollover and other things. So we'll study this. This one is what you can call it as a mu circle. Puts the limit. You should operate your vehicle within this region then only it will be stable. 
otherwise it will become unstable okay these are the values i have shown but just because i said by 9 and all that mu it's not possible to accelerate to that value still there is a there is a limit okay all right these are the points we have taken and drawn this circle maximum acceleration right so another very important thing that so i hope you understood what we mean by handling it is to do with one overing during exit so you have understood what is performance what is handling and what are the limits of acceleration linear acceleration and lateral acceleration now another important thing that we discussed now is what we call it as ride let us discuss that yeah ride is related to the vibration of the vehicle excited by the surface irregularities and its effects on passenger comfort you see these are the road excitations this should be transferred to the from the tire to the wheel then to the suspension then to the chassis then to the seats then it will be finally transferred to the occupant okay so how do we reduce this vibrations and make human being comfortable see human being like any other mechanical system has many parts correct so also his brain many of these parts also have natural frequency that means human being can also be modeled as mass spring and damper so now the question is there is excitation frequency and the natural frequency if the natural frequency of the human parts coincide with the excitation frequency obviously that particular part will undergo resonance because of that he feels uncomfortable uncomfortable so obviously we should avoid resonance occurring so that can be seen as an occupant probably sometime vomiting getting headache all such things can happen so how do we isolate such frequencies how do we damp down these things suppose if i simply write it as with a simple equation a sin omega t where a is the amplitude of the excitation and omega is the frequency of excitation so how suppose natural frequency is something like omega n we should see to it these two do not coincide if the amplitudes are very high how do we reduce the amplitude because what is really happening is z is displacement correct then z dot will become velocity z double dot will become acceleration this acceleration acting on a mass that will result into force and force when to distance traveled will be say work done if he is not able to absorb that work done the human being will be definitely uncomfortable 
the work done on the human being is very very high that may even physically damage the human parts okay so one is the frequency may create lot of uncomfort this may lead to forces acting on the parts of the human body okay so how do we do this is all about a right so that we can provide comfort as i said these tires that we use they are not perfect tires they will give they will also create some excitation forces engine will also create excitation forces road irregularities will create excitation forces and even the drive line will create excitation forces so how exactly we design our suspension system so that the occupant is comfortable is all to do with right so another very important thing is that we design the suspension not only to provide comfort also one of the most important thing is road holding as this rolls over this system the suspension compress when it is moving up like this but in the tough region it will expansion so earlier i have told jones and there is bones also know that vehicle is having a linear velocity so vehicle is moving it is compressed by the time it comes to this region it has to bounce back so that the wheel should be in contact with this otherwise if the vehicle speed is very high and if these systems are not responding the vehicle might move like this so whole vehicle will be in the air and you will be driver will be losing steering control okay not only this should provide comfort they should respond well that is very important so let us understand the difference between ride and vibration you know that human here here can hear 20 to 20000 hertz below 20 hertz he cannot hear he can only experience this is what you can call them as a ride frequencies so this is what he can experience this but if it increases he experiences that also can hear this becomes noise okay right so we are talking something ride means 0 to something up to say 40 hertz but the critical is 0 to 20 hertz right right so i just made a testing this is the accelerometer uh, placed on the axle housing of a vehicle and this is acceleration versus the time graph then here it is same thing with respect to frequency here you can say somewhere around 13 hertz you see the peak this is because this is what you call it as hop resonance the unsprung mass resonance then placed on the 
the roof of the uh, sorry uh, floor of the vehicle this is the accelerometer floor of the vehicle and again this is time graph you can see somewhere at 1 hertz it is showing the peak value okay it is some other noise so here because we designed the vehicle resonance frequency as 1 hertz that's why it has shown like this on the seat if you see again this is time graph amplitude versus time again at a frequency of 1 hertz you can see the peak right so this is what we need to arrest okay so how to reduce these values amplitude values is what is we are connected so it's all about how to design the suspension system so that the occupant will have very comfortable ride so thus we have so far understood the meaning of performance meaning of handling and ride vehicle dynamics is all related with how to design the vehicle for desired performance handling and right in all the vehicle we don't have to provide everything some vehicles performance and handling is important we should focus more on performance and handling and but comfort or ride is important but they take a bias like you know right but when you are designing a passenger car handling is important reasonable performance but ride is very very important so depending upon what class of vehicle we are designing and what should be focused based on that we have to design our vehicle okay now with this we'll stop at this point and we'll continue in the next session